Now that we've gotten good at solving inverse trig functions, we're ready to apply that by answering the question, how do we solve trig equations? And the short answer of how we solve the trig equations is we're going to use our inverse trig. But we're going to stretch that inverse trig and say, but without domain restrictions. So for example, if I want to know it, what the angle is for 2 cosine theta equals the square root of 3, we can solve this quickly by dividing both sides by 2 so that the cosine of theta is equal to root 3 over 2. And then I just need to think about my unit circle. Cosine's the x-coordinate, so we want a longer x-coordinate, which happens twice. The same x-coordinate, because cosine's off to the right, it happens at 1 pi over 6, and it also happens at 11 pi over 6. But 1 pi over 6 also has a coterminal angle, if we loop around the entire circle, at pi over 6 plus a 2 pi. In fact, we can circle around another time and do pi over 6 plus 4 pi. And we can keep going and going. Same thing for the 11 pi over 6. We can do 11 pi over 6 plus a 2 pi. Or we could do 11 pi over 6 plus a 4 pi. Or we could keep going and going and going. And so to express all the possible angles that satisfy 2 cosine theta equals root 3, we'll do one statement for each angle. At 11 pi over 6, we add, we're going to say, 2k pi's. And k is the number of times around the circle. So that gives us 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi. And same with the 11 pi over 6, plus 2k pi's, because that's going to rotate us. And so these two statements then become our solution for all of the possible solutions for that angle. Let's try another one so we can get an idea of finding that expression for all possible solutions. Let's do 2 times the sine of theta equals negative 1. Well, to get the sine alone, we divide by 2, and the sine of theta is equal to negative 1 half. So I draw my unit circle. Sine is the y-coordinate, and I want it to be negative. So I want to go down just a little bit, which means we've got these two angles, 11 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6, that have a y-coordinate of down just a little bit. So we can say that our solution then is the 7 pi over 6 plus 2k pi. In other words, k revolutions around the circle. Or 11 pi over 6 plus 2k pi. And that gives us our complete solution. Sometimes we're given a domain restriction, though. If the domain restriction said from 0 to 2 pi, we would just have to list the values within the first revolution of the circle. So in that case, it would just be 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. So make sure you look, do we have a domain restriction, or does it want all the possible solutions? Sometimes we've got more than just theta. for the angle. And what I mean by that is sometimes we're solving problems like 5 sine of 3 theta equals 5. And if we have more than just theta for the angle, in this case 3 theta, we're going to replace 
with u. In other words, for this one, we're going to say u is equal to those three thetas. And so we're going to actually solve 5 sine of u equals 5. And if I do that, dividing both sides by 5 gives me that the sine of u is equal to 1. Sine being the y-coordinate, we know is 1 up here at pi over 2. So that tells us my solution for u is equal to pi over 2 plus 2k pi's, k revolutions of the circle. But we weren't actually solving for u. We were solving for 3 theta. So now we substitute back and say, OK, now we know 3 theta is equal to pi over 2 plus 2k pi. And we can solve this by dividing by 3, which puts a 3 in the denominator, or just dividing by 3 on the right. And we're left with theta equals pi over 6 plus 2 thirds of k pi. And that's going to give us all the solutions for 5 sine of 3 theta equals 5. Let's try another example for this. Let's try 2 cosine of 2 theta equals negative square root of 2. And let's give it a domain restriction from 0 to 2 pi. Same as before, we don't like the 2 theta, so we're going to make that u. And then we're going to now have 2 cosine of u equals negative square root of 2, which we can solve for the cosine of u by dividing by 2, giving us negative root 2 over 2, leading us to our unit circle. Cosine is the x-coordinate. We know we want x to be negative, so we're off to the left. And root 2 over 2 we know is right in the middle. There's just two options for it. That happens at 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. That one doesn't look like it's in the middle. Let's draw better middle angles. There we go. Now, because we've got a domain restriction, we don't have to do the plus 2k pi. But what I am going to notice is the angle's called 2 theta. That's going to double my distance around the circle. So we're going to do that here as well. We're going to go around the circle two times because we have 2 theta in the problem. So for my solutions for u, I'm going to say they're 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. So we've got the 3, the 5. But then if I keep going around, we get another 2 pi, which is 8 plus 3, 11 pi over 4. And then going around to the last one, 5 plus 8 is 13 pi over 4. So we've gone around the circle twice. We added 2 pi to each of my first angles in order to cover the 2 theta inside the cosine. Because now when I convert back to the 2 theta, 2 theta is equal to 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 11 pi over 4, and 13 pi over 4. We're going to divide by 2, which sticks a 2 in each of these denominators. Dividing by 2 gives us theta is equal to 3 pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, 11 pi over 8, and 13 pi over 8. And now all of our solutions for theta are between 0 and 2 pi. Now all the problems we've solved so far have had nice pretty angles that we're used to working with. But we don't always have our common angles. So what do we do if we don't have our common angles? For example, if we've got the sine of x is equal to negative 0.29. Well, the short answer is we're going to use a calculator. 
and find the other angle. So from here, we know x is going to be the sine inverse of the negative 0.29. We can do that on our calculator. And when we do it on our calculator, the calculator is going to say it knows the domain of the sine is just use the right side. And this y coordinate is negative, so it's going to be down somewhere. We don't know where exactly. Let's find that angle first. So we're going to type in, first checking the mode. I'm in radians. Good. Sine inverse of negative 0.29 gives us an angle of negative 0.294. But we don't really like to see negative angles. So let's say we know the full circle is 2 pi. And then we're going to back up the 0.294. So for our first angle, the full circle is 2 pi. And when we back up the 0.294, that should give us the angle we're looking for. I can type that in my calculator, 2 pi minus 0.294. We're at about 5.989. But there's also a second angle that has the same y coordinate, if I draw a line through the y axis, that, this cal that the calculator does not tell me about. So I have to do a little bit of work to get there. What's nice is I know that it's got the same angle as the angle on the right. So in other words, this is 0.294 down from 1 pi, which is half the circle. So my second option for x is 1 full pi plus another 0.294. And when I put that in my calculator, it'll give me 3.436. And so now I've got the two angles that give me a sign of negative 0.29. This problem did not have a domain restriction, so we have to actually say that x is equal to 5.989. Add the 2k pi, because we can rotate around the circle as many times as we want. And 3.436, add the 2k pi. And that's going to give us all solutions for this equation. Let's try one with a domain restriction, though. Let's do 3 cosine of x equals 1. And let's just do it on 0 to 2 pi. Well, we know right off we have to say cosine of x is equal to 1 third. And cosine inverse of 1 third is equal to our angle. If I think about my unit circle, cosine, we remember the domain is in the top half. Here, the cosine inverse is positive 1 third, so it's going to stick me somewhere in the first quadrant. We don't know where it is. Let's actually do that in purple. We don't know where that is exactly. The calculator is going to give that to us. Cosine inverse of 1 third, 1.23. So my first option for x is 1.23. My second option for x is going to have the same x coordinate. So if I draw a line through the x axis, it gives me a point with the same x coordinate. Notice that that is 1.23 away from a full circle. If I do a full circle and back up 1.23, we get my angle. So 2 pi is the full circle. Back up 1.23. And when I type that in my calculator, I get 5.052. So for my final answer, x is equal to 1.23 and 5.052. Because we have the domain restriction of one revolution of the circle, we stop there. 
Now what if we combine both of these concepts together? Solving with the calculator and having more than just theta or x in for my angle. Let's try to solve 7 cosine of 3x equals 4 on the domain of 0 to 2 pi. Similar to last time, instead of working with the 3x, we're going to make it a u. So 7 cosine of u equals 4. Dividing by 7 gives us the cosine of u is 4 sevenths. So we know u is equal to the cosine inverse of 4 sevenths. Thinking about my unit circle, cosine's the x-coordinate. 4 sevenths is positive, so the x-coordinate is going to be positive. Somewhere off to the right, we don't know where exactly. We'll use our calculator to figure out what that angle should be. The cosine inverse of 4 divided by 7, that angle is 0.963. So for our options for you, we've got 0.963. But because of the 3 in front of the angle, we're going to account for three revolutions of the circle. So we're going to add 2 pi to get the second revolution of the circle at 7.246. And then we'll add 2 pi again to get our third revolution of the circle, because it's 3x to get 13.529. So we've got three revolutions of the circle to account for the 3x. But that's not the only place that has the cosine we want. If I draw a line through the x, because cosine is the x, that gives us another angle at 0.963 down from the x-axis. But we can use much the same strategy. We know it's 2 pi all the way around, and so we'll back up a pi. So I'll do 2 pi all around, and then we back up the 0.963 2 pi, back up the 0 0.963, 5.320. I'll just call it 5.32 is our next solution. But again, we're going to do three revolutions here as well. So we'll add 2 pi to get 11.603. And then for the third revolution, we'll add another 2 pi to get 17.887. But remember, u is equal to 3x. We're solving for x, so we're going to divide by 3 to get our final answers. And we're going to divide all six of these numbers by 3. And when we do, we'll just do it on our calculator really quick. 963 divided by 3 is 0.321. Then 7.246 divided by 3 is 2.415. And 13.529 divided by 3 is 4, 4.510. 5.32. divided by 3, 1.773. And 11.603 divided by 3, 3.868. And finally, 17.887 divided by 3 is 5.962. And now you notice all of those are less than 2 pi. We have our six angles where 7 times the cosine of 3 times these values is equal to 4.
So we're really getting comfortable with our inverse trig as we solve these equations with sines, cosines. And there could be a few tangents with much the same idea. Take a look at practicing these on your homework assignment. And let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.